Tuja footage. Uh, this is a loop of Sterling, so they do three loops, I think it is, just before uh, the finish, and I think it's on stage three this year. Uh, it'll be good, good stage. Um, it's quite selective, actually. It's it's not it's not huge hills, but it's decently hilly enough, meaning that pure sprinters probably can't survive. And normally, a sort of puncher like Jay McCarthy, uh, Simon Gerrans, maybe Sagan. It wasn't in last year's race, I don't think, and Sagan was a uh, was obviously that was the first time he raced Tour Down Under for a bit of time. Um, but it'll be interesting to see if Sagan makes it, I think. Uh, Nathan Haas, obviously, the red light ahead of us, he could definitely do well on this stage. Um, so I think Katusha wanted to have a good look out, look at it, and uh, figure out what's going on. So yeah, it was a good, good ride with these lads. Um, again, power data is missing, as we all know, it's just like 200 watts, um, pretty chill. If you want to see some other, other videos with power data, um, I've got some other ones up. Uh, it just takes a very long time to do, unfortunately. It takes about two hours to put on, just because my laptop is very bad at rendering, uh, which is a bit annoying. Uh, but if you do want power data, I can put it on if you're if it's super special. But I feel like on these rides, it's it's not super relevant because, I mean, I'm doing 200, 240 watts now. It's just pretty chilled endurance pace. Um, they're all running 39, 28, so they have to sort of grind it a little bit. I'm running 36, 28, so it's slightly better. Um, but yeah, it's it's just good riding with the pros, seeing what they do, how they drink, how they eat, how they descend, how they climb, what gears they use, how they're on the bike, where they, like on the climbs normally they're on the hoods and then on the rest of it they're sort of on the tops or the drops, especially in t training rides, I think on races they're probably a bit more hesitant on the brakes or whatever, make sure they're uh, fighting for position, make sure they're not going to crash or whatever, but on training rides obviously it's a lot more chill. You can see they're pretty lean everyone, uh, Nathan has his absolutely huge legs, that's one thing I know, just sprinters seem to have a lot of sprinters seem to have huge legs, like, just his legs are just monstrous, um, and he can put some big watts in. Uh, obviously the GoPro does have a bit of hypertrophy, it definitely does increase the muscle mass on these riders, uh, for no apparent reason. You can see that we've got some spectators on the side of the road watching us, um, which is pretty sick. And you can see the guy ahead of me, I think that's Machado, has got a pretty nice pedaling technique. Uh, it's pretty interesting to see how they all pedal, sometimes they pedal differently to, uh, to each other, but mainly they have a pretty push a lot of force on the downstroke and then it flicks straight back and a little bit of force on the upstroke but they're um there's on the dead part of the pedal stroke they just don't use it uh, which is interesting because a lot of amateurs do um and that apparently that's the main difference between pros and amateurs which is a pretty interesting thing it was getting pulled up uh, by a red light well not a red light sort of a stoplight um i'm just gonna do some tracks and so you see they're running the zip wheels they've got the canyon air roads uh, most of them. Uh, six of them had the Canyon Air Roads and uh, two of them had the Ultimate CF SLX, which is a nice light climbing bike. Uh, I think in this race probably the Air Road would be better because the Air Road is pretty much as light um, and a lot of these races are super fast speed but it doesn't really matter too much. And if you look ahead I'm pretty sure uh, Nathan Haas is doing um, doing some calibration of his power meter, some zero offset. Uh, so on the Quark D0s, which I believe they're running, there's Harley, uh, I think that if you backstroke, um, if you pedal backwards uh, five times, then uh, that resets the uh, power meter. So you can see you can compare Harley to how lean Harley is compared to the pro riders. And he's he's pretty similar leanness to be honest. Um, which obviously at this time of year is not not too not too crazy because the other riders are um, they're not they're not in their peak form to be honest. They're, a lot of them have had probably good month off in, in October, started training in November, pretty chill December, they start to do a bit more, but even then it's, it's relatively easy. I think the Australian riders generally take this race a bit more seriously because it's easy to train and they've got the motivation. So you can see even the pros can't always clip in first time, but you'll see off the lights we go pretty hard, like up to 600 watts probably, and then, um, and then just chill back and just, yeah, just get back into an easy tempo. Now, none of them were riding discs, which is weird, because Canyon definitely liked the discs. They're pushing discs a lot. Um, you can see there's some weird thing on the road. Um, I'm not sure what that was. They're doing, they're doing a lot of road works. I think it was for the race, but I was 100% sure. Um, but, yeah, it's weird they're not riding discs. Just not, not as in from their perspective, but more from Canyon's perspective, because I know they like to sell a lot of disc brakes, but maybe they know here... In Australia, no one really buys discs, to be honest, because they have pretty good weather most of the time, unless you live near the Alps or whatever, in, then there's no real need in Australia. Uh, the Australian Alps, that is, like, near Victoria, there are some big climbs. Uh, but I guess the UK and other places, like America, where it rains a bit more, or some parts of America, um, then disc brakes are definitely a good thing, and maybe they'll be pushing them more. I can imagine spring classics, that probably force everyone to use disc brakes, because we'll also you get wider tyre clearance. So that's one thing with the disc brakes, you do get wider tyre clearances. But um, I think on the air roads, you can probably fit 28 anyway, because it's got um, 
because they're running the Shimano Dura Race uh, direct mount brakes, uh, so they have slightly wider tire clearance than the average than the average brake, um, and then the normal caliper one. Uh, so you can see some of them running. I think most of them are running two bottles. They're only doing two hours. It's quite nice, quite nice bead on design. Quite like the light blue. What do you think of their kit? I think it's pretty good to be honest. Like enjoy the light blue to be honest. I think it's a lot better than what they used to have with the white, and I think it's also a lot better than the pure like no burgundy and like white. I thought that didn't look very nice. Maybe it's just like, how your your perceptions change when time moves. But ever it did look a little bit dated, but. Anyway, I think now they've they've settled on a good one. They're sponsored by Alperson as well, which is pretty interesting. Caffeine in caffeine shampoo. I'm not really sure the like the reasoning behind that, but anyway, um, they're all running 3928, I believe. Um, so that's probably you really need for um, Adelaide if you're doing the tour down under because they don't go any, up any steep climbs. If you're coming as a recreational cyclist, I definitely definitely recommend probably a 34, 32 for the average rider. Uh, if you're a bit fitter, maybe get away with a 36-28 or a 36-32. Um, it depends. I have a 36-28 uh, because the 32 the cassette doesn't, the 32 tooth doesn't work on my cassette, but I'm going to get that fixed and then it should be good. For me, I think a 34-32 would have been better, but it was just very hard to do because I would have to change quite a lot of stuff for my bike. And in London, you don't really need gears that easy um, because the climbs just aren't steep or they aren't long. Um, so that's, that's the truth of the matter. Uh, it's weird Nathan has to run a, a light I think uh, in some states in Australia I think you have to uh, but here in Adelaide uh, in South Australia they're pretty lax well not really but they're pretty lax compared to the rest of Australia on the whole cycling rules because uh, in the rest of Australia you have in some places you have to have bells you have to have like pedal reflectors and all the stupid bollocks um, pushing the safety onto the cyclists when in reality car drivers should be the main people who are getting the lessons on safety uh, there's the team car. We just need. They just told us to, you know, hold back a bit when they're going past the team car because they want to take some pictures, um, and we were more than happy to oblige because we were uh, getting a ride along with them, which is good. Um, so I was just saying thanks for that, um, which is nice. Um, so you can see on the downhills, I have to put in a bit of work, um, just get in the aero position, or whatever, and draft them. They they don't really rail the downhills that much uh, most of the time because there's no need. Uh, there's no need to take any risk or anything. Um, which is nice, uh, nice. A lot of cars actually pull out though, which is weird. And we got a bit of abuse from them as a motorist, which I thought was strange. Um, but going back to the whole cycling rules, uh, South Australia, I think you just need to wear a helmet. And that's pretty much it. Um, which obviously is different to the UK because UK it's um, and most of Europe, to be honest, uh, you don't need to. It's not the law to wear a helmet, uh, but here in Australia it is. So just remember that when you're popping down to the shops or whatever, where you might forget. Uh, normally, when on your training ride, obviously you won't forget, but little things like that you might. Uh, which is good. I think it's good though, to be honest that. South Australia has less stringent rules or whatever, because I think it's a bit ridiculous on the other ones, how much fines you can get, it's just a bit pointless. Um, but I, I don't know, I think the pros are a bit um, a bit oblivious to things like that, often. Uh, as Team Sky showed, when they ran some red lights, turned right when they couldn't, etc, etc. Um, obviously it's hard because they have to adapt to lots of different countries, but I think most of Europe has the same rules on cycling, so it's... Uh, chilled out like you can't ride in a bus lane here which is pretty odd um didn't know that so here's some more road works i'm pretty sure they're just sorting this out for tour down under which is pretty nice in them um pretty good there's also a pothole in norton something they could fix as well but i'm not sure if they will because they're racing uphill um so you can see they're already wearing the city shoes or the city overshoes because uh, that's the rules uh, well that's not the rule so that's their sponsored by it which i always think is questionable because it should sort of be your more personal preference and wearing over overshoes in the summer is quite a lot of effort uh, so you can see around the roundabouts, they're pretty comfortable doing with the track standing or whatever, which is nice. Um, so we're just rolling up. I think we're just heading home now. Uh, I think we, uh, maybe we're doing another lap. I can't remember. We're either continuing on the lap or we're he heading um, heading back to uh, down, go down the freeway. I think we're doing another lap now, uh, which is a nice lap to be honest. Around Sterling, it's um, it's just good good rolling terrain. Um, a bit tiring, but with a bunch, I think it'll be. It's a, it's a lot easier. So you can see Dan's to the left of me, um, just filming Harley. As he said, said to get behind him, which is all, all right. Everyone likes a bit. Everyone likes to see themselves on GoPro, see themselves on YouTube, which is always good. Uh, sorry about that. That's my chair. So you can see the Katusha guys are just chilling up here. Um, just very, very nice, very casual pace. Um, it was good riding with the guys. Just, just learning. I always, always mention that. Just, just learn. Like if you're gonna ride with someone better than you. Might just be like a, your cat four person's cat one or whatever. You have four Wikido FTP. They have seven or six or whatever it is. Just learn things from them. It's very useful. Um, yeah, we're doing another lap here. Continuing the lap. So it's just useful to learn from people who are better than you. So cheers for watching, and I'll see you in the next vid.